Hello and welcome to Field Note. Today we're going to be talking about everybody's favorite geologic feature, the volcano. So you probably already know what a basic volcano looks like, but there are three main types. And before we get to that, we're going to look at the anatomy of a volcano. So let's look at how it actually gets that quintessential cone shape. A volcano begins by being a simple crack or fissure in the crust. This crack then extrudes magma, and since things always follow the path of least resistance, this already established crack becomes what we know as a conduit. As magma continues to erupt from the fissure, it slowly builds up the cone shape that we see as a volcano. Another feature is the crater at the top. These craters are created from material that is expelled from the volcano, which then settles and creates a steep-sided depression. You may know this as a caldera, which is technically a crater that is more than one kilometer across. As a volcano matures, fissures can also develop on the side of the cone. If this fissure continues to see activity, then it can develop into its own little mini volcano and be known as a parasitic cone, because they are living off an already existing volcano. Much the same way a parasitic plant or animal will live off of a host. So now that we know the basic anatomy of a volcano, let's look at those three different types. First, we have a shield volcano. These are given the name because of their shape. If you look at the profile of one of these volcanoes, you will notice it looks like a shield. These are typically found on the oceanic crust and are made of basaltic magma. I have no idea what I'm talking about? Click here to check on my other video on this very topic. A great example of shield volcanoes are the Hawaiian Islands, specifically Mauna Loa. This shape is due to the lava being what is considered a fast and far lava, meaning it travels very far, very fast. This gives the volcano a very shallow slope but a very wide range. The fast and far lava is also why these volcanoes are made of very thin basalt layers. Thin layers of the lava harden as it moves away and these typically have very little ash expulsion associated with their eruptions. The next type of volcano is a cinder cone or a scoria cone. These are built almost entirely out of ejected lava fragments and very little lava flow. The ejected lava can result in either a fine ash or what are known as bombs which are just pieces that are bigger than one meter across. The lava flows that do occur in these volcanoes typically happen from the base and not the peak of the cone. Here are some pictures of some cinder cones. I took them. Cinder cones tend to be very steep sided and less than 300 meters tall. The steep sides are due to the material being able to maintain a very high slope before collapsing. In general, a cinder cone can hold a 30 to 40 degree slope. While most are fairly symmetrical, the shape is really dictated by wind conditions. If the wind is blowing in a westerly fashion, then you will have a heavy west sided cone because more of the material will have been blown there. Finally, cinder cones are typically created in one volcanic event. More than half are created in less than a month, and 95% of them are created in less than a year. There are thousands of these volcanoes throughout the world, and while some of them are in volcanic fields, such as you find in Arizona, you can also find them as parasitic cones. The final type of volcano is the one that is typically thought of and is also the most picturesque. Like this one. I also took that picture. <laughs> and that is the stratovolcano or composite volcano. Stratovolcano sounds much cooler. These volcanoes are located around the world in what is known as the Ring of Fire, which is associated with subduction zones. These are called strato or composite volcanoes because of the typically alternating layers of ash and cinder and lava flow. The shape of these are very distinctive. They have very shallow flanks that then go into steep peaks. And this is due to the fact that they have both materials. They have lava flows like shield volcanoes, which are very wide, and cinders, which like in cinder cones, lead to a very steep sided volcano. While these tend to be known for their picturesque symmetry, lateral eruptions do happen. <coughs> Mount St. Helens. So now that we're at the end, let's answer the question that everyone has. Which is the most dangerous? Many of the known destructive eruptions have been caused by stratovolcanoes. Like I mentioned, Mount St. Helens' lateral eruption was pretty significant, but we also can't forget about Mount Vesuvius, which destroyed Pompeii. So what today is the most dangerous volcano? Well, by many accounts, it's Mount Rainier. This has less to do with the volcano itself and more to do with the fact that it's right next to Seattle and therefore right next to a lot of people. Not to say that any of the other volcanoes couldn't kill you, so please be aware of your local volcano. This has been a PSA. Be sure to leave any questions or comments or anything down below. I try to respond to just about everything I get. Like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you would like to see more, share to your desired social media site, and I will see you next time. You may know this, you may know, you may know this feature on, you may know this feature by another term called a caldera. You may know this feature under another term called a caldera, which typically, which technically refers to ones greater than one kilometer in diameter. You may know this as a caldera, which is technically, 
You may know this as a caldera, which is technically a crater that is greater than one kilometer in diameter. So close. You may know this as a you may know this as a caldera, which is technically a crater that has a diameter greater than one kilometer. You may know this as a caldera, which is technically a crater that is greater than one. God. You may know this as a caldera, which is technically a crater that is greater than one kilometer across.